Signore e signori, buonasera, benvenuti alla Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimoda della New York University. Welcome um, for this evening of music. I thank you for having braved not much the weather, but the slippery streets of New York in this very treacherous night, so be very careful. But we're very happy that you're here with us, and as we wrote in our Facebook post this morning, I'm sure you will walk out of here warmed up in your body and lifted up in your spirit, uh, thanks to the music that you're about to listen to. As you know, the title is a Latin romance, and the music featured is by Schumann, Astor Piazzolla, and our own Roberto Scarcella Perino that is going to the podium in just a few minutes. Um, it's a very interesting mix of uh, composers, as you can tell, and we have the fortune of having two uh, great musicians from Italy, uh, Valentina Renesto, uh, who plays both the sax soprano and the sax alto, and she will perform on both tonight. And Giuseppe Bruno, who will be at the piano, he is a conductor and a pianist, and he's also the director of the conservatory in La Spezia, Italy. Um, before asking Roberto to come to the podium and tell you something about uh, the program that you're about to listen to, I just wanted to uh, remember that Roberto teaches here in the Department of Italian Studies at New York University, is one of the most successful and beloved professors that we have, and I also have the fortune to have him on my team in Florence, uh, where he teaches a wonderful course that is an introduction to Italian opera, and I'm very envious because he always manages to get evaluations better than my course on cinema. Um, but aside from the teaching, Roberto is a truly, truly brilliant composer, uh, very versatile, and we have the fortune of having him here as our composer in residence, basically, and we have the fortune to witness the different steps that he took in his composing career. So we had, I th think, two operas of Roberto performed here, uh, several sonatas, uh, the lullabies, um, the music he composed for a ballet. So. It's, it's a great fortune to be able to witness from the inside of the casa the wonderful evolution that uh, Roberto Scarcella has taken as a composer. And I think the two pieces we are about to listen to uh, will confirm the great expectations we've always had about him as a composer also, on top of being a very successful professor. Please welcome Roberto Scarcella Perino. Mamma mia, Stefano, <laughs> I'm feeling I'm very important now after this speech. Uh, so I want just to intro introduce the program. Um, we are going to have uh, Robert Schumann at the beginning that is going to, uh, and uh, Robert Schumann, Adagio e Allegro, the title is in Italian, but Robert Schumann is a German composer. And he wrote this piece for, uh, originally for horn and piano. And then there was, uh, um, there is also a version for violin, cello, and viola for the same instrument. Tonight we're going to listen to the version for saxophone. Uh, Robert Schumer didn't know this instrument, didn't know saxophone, so I'm sure he will love from the sky <laughs> to listen to the instrument. And um, it, uh, the two pieces are Adagio e Allegro, and uh, were written uh, um, for horn. Uh, before uh, um, Schumann, there was the, the instrument, the horn was only playing few notes. Uh, but uh, thanks to a new instrument uh, that was created, he could perform also chromatic styles and more elaborated music. And, uh, and, and Schumann wanted to actually uh, prove to the audience that the horn uh, could play uh, really well. The same here, he wrote also an orchestra piece for four horns. Um, so he really liked, you know, to write for the instrument. Um, the second piece is actually another composer from Sicily, as me. Uh, it's not, uh, <laughs> uh, the saxophone is going to stay here, so it's not going to be the sonata, but the capriccio. Um, and then the sonata. The capriccio for alto and saxophone and piano. Um, 
uh, it's very difficult for me to explain my music, uh, but I can tell you only that I wrote this piece in Sicily, uh, at the beach, without a computer, without a piano. I was just you know, singing this melody, and then I decided to write it. So this is, was the story of the Capriccio. And the sound, you know, also the title, Capriccio, uh, is, uh, is like that. Um, Sonata. Yeah, the sonata number one. Um, I, I actually didn't write so many sonatas. The composer, they don't write sonatas nowadays. They used to like Beethoven, Mozart, and Schumann, of course, they wrote a lot of sonatas. But um, in uh, 214, nobody really writes sonata anymore. But for me, it was uh, like to. Uh, make a movie, uh, write a movie for the old days. Uh, so it was like to write a sonata for me, like now I can do it. Uh, and this is a genre that is very with a structure. There are two um, themes at the beginning. The first uh, <coughs> theme, that is the first character, with the second one, the second character. They are connected by a bridge. And, uh, and then you have a, a, a middle part where uh, this middle session that's where the development of the story is happening. And at the end, you have uh, a resolution of everything. So it's, uh, when you listen to the first movement of a sonata, it's like to listen to a story that uh, has a beginning and an ending. The second movement of the sonata is an andante. Uh, and this is a very peaceful melody, very easy. Um, there is also a counterpoint in the middle. Um, a little sugar, it's like cooking, you know, put some, some stuff there. Uh, and it's attached to this tarantella. Tarantella is, um, of course, a, a, a dance that is from southern of Italy. It's not a Sicilian dance. It's mostly from Naples or even Puglia. But we have our, in Sicily, we have our own tarantella that we are proud of. Uh, and uh, actually, this tarantella is a very classical tarantella, very difficult to play. I'm lucky to have actually here uh, Giuseppe Bruno to play. Um, and this, um, this is just a fun piece. So at the end, uh, with a tarantella rondo, you can listen. Um, then, after Scarcella, Piazzolla, a kind of rhyme. Uh, after Piazzolla doesn't need to be presented, of course. Um, we have Histoire du Tango, a beautiful piece. And I actually, uh, uh, Piazzolla wrote uh, um, a presentation of uh, like a, some, uh, some program notes <coughs> of, the, of this piece. Uh, that are much better than my presentation before about my pieces. So I want to invite here Patricia Chen, who is the La Regina del Tango in New York, for me. <laughs> the, she wrote a book, uh, it takes two, about tango, and she's going to read uh, Astor Piazzolla descriptions um, about this piece. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Histoire du Tango attempts to convey the history and evolution of the tango in four movements, Bordello, 1900, Café, 1930, Nightclub, 1960, and Concert d'Aujourd'hui. Piazzolla provided program notes that expand on the individual movements, Bordello, 1900. The tango originated in Buenos Aires in 1882. It was first played on the guitar and flute. Arrangements then came to include the piano and later the concertina. This music is full of grace and liveliness. It paints a picture of the good nature chatter of the French, Italian, and Spanish women who people those bordellos as they tease the policemen, thieves, sailors, and riffraff who came to see them. This is a high spirited tango. Cafe, 1930. This is another age of the tango. People stopped dancing it as they did in 1900, preferring instead simply to listen to it. It became more <coughs> musical and more romantic. This tango has undergone total transformation. The movements are slower, with new and often melancholy harmonies. Tango orchestras come to consist of two violins, two concertinas, a piano, and a bass. The tango is sometimes sung as well. Nightclub, 1960. This is a time of rapidly expanding international exchange, and the tango evolves again as Brazil and Argentina come together in Buenos Aires. The bossa nova and the new tango are moving to the same beat. 
Audiences rush to the nightclubs to listen earnestly to the new tango. This marks a revolution and a profound alteration in some of the original tango forms. Modern day concert. Certain concepts in tango music become intertwined with modern music. Bartok, Stravinsky, and other composers reminisce to the tune of tango music. This is today's tango and the tango of the future as well. Grazie Patrizia. And now uh, Valentina Renesto e Giuseppe Bruno. Thank you. I will be the Page Turner composer.
Um, I want just to have your attention one second. Uh, there is uh, uh, our next event, uh, my event, and also <laughs> with Federica Nikini, I don't know if she's here, but um, with Federica, uh, we wrote, we have a, an, a project about Le Passioni dell'Aria, the passion of the air. That there is a cycle of song that I wrote for uh, children's chorus and piano about the um, weather. Uh, condition that today is so appropriate. <laughs> uh, so we have the, the fog, the hail, the wind, the uh, many other. Uh, and the last one, of course, is the sunshine that we love so much. Uh, so I'm going to uh, to show you a video we prepare for Kickstarter, you know, uh, to promote our uh, project. And then I will invite you also to, to sign uh, your email if you're interested to uh, spread the news uh, to send to other people our project. So I will send it to you and it will send to um, everybody. So we can have the, uh, you know, the, the, the budget to have the CDs and to um, also dispose of this project. My name is Roberto Scarcella Perino. I am a composer. I, I decided, decided to write a piece for uh, children because in the Italian tradition there are not so many uh, pieces for children's chorus. I wanted this uh, piece to be in Italian and I chose as a team uh, weather conditions. I asked my friend Federica to write the lyrics in Italian and she accepted right away and the first thing she said was oh, le passioni dell'aria i was delighted when roberto offered me to help me with this uh, project writing the words for this musical pieces and i thought it was a wonderful idea to try to describe how children perceive uh, weather conditions i'm a medievalist and so i also thought immediately to the pages that aristotle writes about the um, weather and how he describes them as uh, passions of the air. With Federica we found a beautiful chorus, the New York City Children's Chorus, directed by Mary Huff. And when we asked her to be part of this project, she was really enthusiastic. We met together, I listened to some of Roberto's music. It's amazing and beautiful. And I'm just delighted that such a friendly, kind, caring person is so interested in writing music for children's choirs. It was very exciting for me to be able to sing a song in Italian and I thought that was pretty cool that we could actually meet the composer of the song that we're singing that he wrote the song that we're singing especially for us. I speak Italian because my father was Italian and I went to the Italian school for eight years and I'm so excited to be singing a piece in Italian that was written especially for our choir. When we went to the school to assist to a rehearsal of the uh, kids, they were so happy and excited about the project Then, when we asked them to come up with a new possible weather condition to conclude the series with, they came up with a whole list ranging from uh, acid rain to sunshine and we decided that acid rain was not a good idea and so we chose in fact uh, sunshine. We are here on Kickstarter because we want to present a concert uh, on May 15th, 2014 at the Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimo. Roberto is an accomplished composer. One of his specialties, among many others that he has, is to write music for children. I think the combination of uh, the poetic vein of Federica with Roberto's magnificent music is going to be very exciting. I'm very happy that they've uh, decided to present the premiere of this work here at Casa Italiana, also because it will give these uh, young kids the possibility to learn to sing in Italian, that we want to believe is still the language of music and singing.